Welcome to the Hudson Show. Coming up, DraftKings just got caught red-handed. Also, the McFlurry is getting a makeover. All that and more on the way next. It is the Hudson Show from Radio U. We are going to start things off, as we so often do, with hot dogs. Because I don't know if you saw this report that came out earlier this week from the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, which is an actual thing, an actual council. They think they get together and have meetings. They're like, what should we do for hot dogs and sausage this month? Uh, Everybody, we can check the minutes from the last. Anyways, uh, they put out a statement clarifying the mystery of why, for so long, hot dogs have been sold in packages of 8 or 10. Meanwhile, hot dog buns are sold in different size packages, and sometimes it just feels very difficult to match them up. Let's just go through the statement line by line. They say, when hot dog buns were introduced, hot dogs were sold in varying quantities at the butcher shop. It wasn't until 1940 that hot dogs were packaged the way we currently see them in the grocery store. When manufacturers began packaging hot dogs, they chose the 10 to the pack formula, the formula, like they had to get calculators or whatever, like a chalkboard. Anyways, today, hot dogs are sold most often in eight or 10 to the pound packs, but some are sold in other quantities as well. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, Sandwich rolls or hot dog buns most often come eight to the pack because the buns are baked in clusters of four in pans designed to hold eight rolls. While baking pans now come in configurations that allow baking 10 and even 12 at a time, the eight roll pan remains the most popular. I mean, our technology has come so far. We can bake twice as many rolls in the same pan. However, to save you from the bread aisle arithmetic anxiety, you'd need to purchase five bags of eight to the pack buns and four 10 to the pack hot dogs to break even. Yes, I understand that. I've done that many times. Purchase 40 hot dogs and 40 buns at once, all for myself. There's no problems with that. Um, I, I actually, uh, I'm glad that we now got the history lesson on this so we know the why, but I've never been as frustrated as everyone else has. I know it's like a funny thing from Father of the Bride. And Steve Martin gets all upset in the bread aisle. It really doesn't bother me that much because one, I'm always buying so many hot dogs and hot dog buns. Like I just lose track. I'm just like, I always have hot dogs. I always have buns because they're so important to me. But secondly, I don't know why it's so important to match up the quantities. There's other foods that are commonly eaten together and we're not like, oh, the amount of cookies has to directly match the amount of milk that you get in a gallon or the amount of bacon and the amount of eggs need to be sold in the same quantities so you run out of both at the same time. If you run out of one, you go get it and, uh, you, you know, you just make do. I don't understand why they all have to be sold in the same. Or peanut butter and jelly. It's not like, oh, well, the peanut butter jar and the jelly jar need to be the same size so that we all run out at the same time. Which brings me to my actual real grievance, which is kind of related to this, which I think is much more much more egregious and that is why are there ever loaves of bread sold that have an uneven number of slices they don't they could make them all they could easily make loaves of bread where it's always an even number of slices so then if the all you use it for is sandwiches you never wind up with one individual slice of bread that that is my frustration it's the hudson show is this true it's on tiktok so it has to be true I see a guy saying that uh, if you want to get like the student subscription price for, say, Sunday Ticket or Spotify, and you don't have a student email anymore, that you can just go to Arizona State's Universal Pathways and sign up for free, and then they, within 24 hours, give you a .edu email so that you can uh, use that to get the student subscription prices for the different services. Um, and then I was wondering, like, is that wrong if you're not a student to do that? But then I thought, no, I don't think it is. I don't think it is if it, if it's true. Um, so I'm going to test it out. I think it's okay, especially if you use the money you save on those subscriptions to go back and do some more learning. Slot machines are such a scam, man. You don't need to look any further for proof than this story out of Connecticut where DraftKings has been fined over $22,000 dollars after an incident last August 
where one of their online slots, because you can actually play the slots online for like real money in Connecticut. They allow that. I've been there. I've seen it. Uh, you can play the slots on the DraftKings app. And uh, they had a slot that did not pay a single person. Like it didn't, you spun it and nobody won at all. They didn't win 10 cents. They didn't win $10. They didn't win nothing for uh, a week, over a week last August. They say that uh, a total of 522 people in Connecticut uh, wagered a total of over $24,000, spun over 20,000 times, and uh, not one received a payout of any. I mean, I, again, we're talking like they didn't even receive a dollar uh, as, a, as a reward, which really shows like you've got terminal casino brain if you're like that i mean that's an average of 45 dollars a person that they kept spending they're like it's due it's gotta hit it's just gotta hit it hasn't paid me out 45 i'm gonna hit at, at some point uh so now that was obviously now how it's supposed to work and uh it's actually supposed to pay out 95 cents on the dollar which is still obviously shows you the math is not in your favor but uh they have now been forced to pay a twenty two thousand dollar fine which uh, I'm going to say probably doesn't go to the 522 people that were playing a broken rigged game against them. But uh, I don't know how it works. DraftKings put out a statement. They said, yes, obviously this is not how it's supposed to work. Of course it was a glitch. If it was working properly. The odds would have been stacked even higher against you. They would you rather Wednesday question from Calvin today, who says, would you rather always have to wear cowboy boots or always have to wear a scarf? You can uh, chime in with your answer at 8772 Radio U. We'll start with Max, who simply says, Scarf. Thank you for uh, explaining that one, Max. Uh, Regina says, Scarf. My boots aren't comfy for long. Also, you can make a scarf look good with many different outfits just by how you style it. Well, that's debatable. Uh, Aaron says, Scarf, especially if cooling towels count. I must have variety in my footwear, according to... Aaron, I don't know what a cooling towel even is. I'm going to say if it's not called a scarf, it doesn't count. Uh, we also heard from Liam who says cowboy boots all day. They go with pretty much everything. And you never know when they actually might come in handy. I guess you could say the same about a scarf. You never know when your neck might be cold. Which brings me to my thoughts, which is I know you can get those like real lacy scarves. But I mean, come on. Guys, guys, we're not going to be wearing lacy scarves any time of year. In the summertime, wearing a scarf is going to be warm. Cowboy boots are so in right now. And I'm not much of a country boy. Sometimes I do get back to my country roots a little bit. But uh, I don't, I've, ne I've never been a cowboy boots guy. But I think I could easily just make a fashion switch. I, and it would work perfectly for me. Cowboy boots cowboy hat um i'll go back to the to the old horseshoe mustache and it would be i mean i'd be an entirely different person but i think that would work well for me that i don't think i could deal with the changes that would come with having to wear a scarf all the time i get why because I, I just feel like it's more accepted for gals to wear scarves so yeah yeah you could pull off the lacy scarf all summer long and it wouldn't be warming your neck i don't even wear scarves in wintertime I don't even wear warm scarves in wintertime. I don't even, my neck isn't cold. I think cowboy boots is definitely the answer for me, but, ah, uh, well, well, let me know what you think if you haven't gotten in yet at 8772 Radio U. And remember, you can always send in a would you rather at 8772 Radio U. Maybe we'll use it on the show. This isn't real, right? Tell me this isn't real. The document that's leaked that supposedly details Travis Kelsey's plan to break up with Taylor Swift. On September 28th, it's got a whole statement and everything. Um, apparently, it's from some agency called a PR firm called Full Scope out of LA. Now, they've denied this completely, and they're actually trying to investigate to figure out like th where this document came from. Um, but then again, they might say that exact same thing, even if the document was real. And it also seems like the type of thing to me that even if they're not actually going to break up, you might have one of these documents always ready because, you know, just it'd be a firestorm. It'd be a mess if they ever were to break up. Now, ignoring the fact that these are two human individuals with thoughts and feelings and all the emotional trials and tribulations that it would put on them as people. Do you think Travis Kelsey would do better if Taylor, like if he stays with Taylor Swift and she comes to all his games because he's always been a monster or would he do even better after they break up? Maybe that like motivates him. I don't know. And she's not distracting. I don't, I don't, 
So, for my fantasy team, which one would be better? Now, one thing that's rising in popularity, and I love this, is according to Open Table, is eating out alone. According to a new study from Open Table, which takes uh, dining reservations, they found that uh, over 50% of people have uh, decided to dine alone at a restaurant at some point in 2024. And that number is even higher uh, the younger you go. The younger you are, the more likely you are to have eaten out alone. And I actually think, and that's, that's the numbers are going up. They're rising. More and more people are doing this. I love this. Um, I am a big proponent of doing things out in public solo, even though, uh, you know, I'm married. I like to do stuff with Mrs. Hudson as well, but I don't think there's anything wrong with going out and doing stuff all by yourself. I think, and, and more and more people are realizing this as well, because uh, it depends on who you are. If you're a withdrawn, you know, introverted person, you don't want, maybe you're, you're like fine doing things alone, but you're worried about the judgment. Well, th- I always think about this, like, if, let's say you go out to a restaurant alone. Maybe, maybe the wait staff, whoever is serving you, maybe they notice and they're like, huh, we don't get many single people, you know, solo people around here. But what do you like? They probably stop thinking about you as soon as you leave the restaurant. You think they go home and tell their, you know, husband, like, it's so weird. I got this guy today. He was all by himself. No, they don't think about that. They're really thinking about you but way less than you think they are. So go ahead. Be free to go solo. And then I think there's even more people that are probably like they're extroverted. And it's like, well, I want to go and hang out with people. But going solo is a unique opportunity to meet new people. It's a unique chance for you to socialize um, in a much different way than you would if you were with a bunch of your friends or a significant other or whatever. Eating out solo, going to the movies solo. There's so many things. If you want to go tonight to Buffalo Wild Wings and house some wings, and you can't find anybody to go with you, just do it. It's going to be fine. Nobody's going to be looking at you. Nobody's going to be thinking about you, and you'll have fun. You can focus on the game and knock it out as many wings as you want. Aren't you so glad football season starts tonight in the NFL? And so you know what we should do. We should talk some football. Who do you think is going to go all the way this year? Let me know your predictions. You can send them into 8772-RADIO-U. For me, here we go. In the AFC, taking the Jets, of course, to win the AFC East. The defense is going to be nasty. You've got Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback. If he plays 10 games, they should be able to make the playoffs. Uh, I've got the Browns winning the AFC North. I think the last time we saw Deshaun Watson playing in a game, uh, he looked pretty good against a great Ravens defense, and he had a busted shoulder. I think if he comes back this year and they've got like three capable backups, I think the Browns will figure it out. There's my, uh, this might be a bit of a dark horse. I like the Jaguars to not only um, win at their division, possibly win at the AFC altogether during the regular season. I think Trevor Lawrence is getting the MVP. Same thing. Everybody's souring on him now because we saw him injured at the last end of last year. It's like, Oh, he didn't look good. Well, he was injured. He was playing through. He was playing hurt. So he's healthy this year. I think the Jacks could have a huge year. Obviously, the Chiefs win the AFC West. Who else are you going to pick? I'll take the Bengals, Texans, and Ravens as wild cards. Bills miss the playoffs. NFC. Eagles win the uh, NFC East, of course. Packers obviously win the NFC North. I have the Buccaneers repeating as the NFC South champ. I don't know. Like, I don't really want to pick anybody in that division. I don't like any of those teams. But give me the Buccaneers. And then, as much as it pains me to do this, the 49ers will win the uh, NFC West. I got the Cowboys still making it. I got the Rams making the playoffs. And then this is my wild card. I think the Giants are going to make the playoffs. I think Brian Dable is that good of a coach. I think he can get there with Daniel Jones. I think Malik Neighbors is a stud. They've improved the roster, and it's just on Daniel Jones to keep it together, not throw interceptions. Uh, it might be tough. May- hey, maybe they don't even use Daniel Jones. Maybe eventually they switch to Drew Locke, and it works. I don't know. I just like Brian Dable that much. Super Bowl pick. Come on, you know, I'm going Packers, Jets. Who will win? I believe it will end in a tie, and Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will both get a Super Bowl win. Of course, I just gave out my predictions for the NFL season a few moments ago. I've got Trevor Lawrence winning the MVP, the Jaguars having a big year, not making it to the Super Bowl, of course, 
But uh, Chad texted in. He said, thank you. As a stupid, loyal Jaguars fan, I appreciate the statement. Hey, the Jaguars were rolling last year. And I know for some reason there's a lot of Trevor Lawrence haters out there. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's just got those good looks. Or maybe some people think he's not good looking. I don't know. It's He's just always been the golden boy. And he's never fully delivered since he's gotten to Jacksonville. But keep in mind, it is Jacksonville. I just think the Jaguars are kind of fun to root for. And I feel like Trevor Lawrence has gotten a little bit too much heat uh, he's gotten playoff wins. He played well last year until he got hurt. Uh, so I, I'm with you, Chad. Obviously, they're not my team, but they're fun to root for. Camden chimed in. He said he thinks the Bengals go all the way. And hey, if Joe Burrow can carry them there, like he's got to do it. I, I I think they're losing a lot with their coaching staff, so I think that's going to make it tough on them. But the Bengals are definitely one of the teams in the Super Bowl bubble that could uh, actually make it happen this year. But of course... My prediction is that uh, the in my in my beautiful NFL fan fiction that the Packers and Jets meet in the Super Bowl and eventually the game is called off because they're just too evenly matched and um, Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love embrace and both are awarded Super Bowl rings on the spot. That's how I see it playing out, at least in my dreams. Nene is in the building. We know what his dreams are. Cowboys win the Super Bowl. I think that's even more unrealistic than mine. It is a food fight on the Hudson Show. Nene has joined me. I actually had Nene stop on his way in today. Gelato. At Taco Bell. We are trying the, what is supposedly hard to get, Baja Blast Gelato. But I didn't tell Nene that when I said, hey, on your way in, can you stop at Taco Bell? How funny would it have been if I just put in an order for myself and made you pick it up? That would have been and so didn't even rude. Get you anything. <laughs> yeah. That would have been so stinking rude. I kind of wish I did that, but that would have been hard to orchestrate and also mean. So uh, yeah, I don't right. have that You're in not me. I'm, mean. I'm a nice guy, mm-hmm. except for when I make you try spicy food. But today, I got I got us uh, the Baja Blast Gelato from Taco Bell. Some say this mm. is hard to acquire. Um, I it, is it brand new? Is that why it's hard to acquire? Yeah, brand new, and it's only available. While supplies last. <laughs> While supplies last. I always wondered when I was a kid growing up, like, why do they always have to say that? But it's because when they run out, you can't get upset at them for not having it. Exactly. Um, do you look out? First of all, I was shocked at how oh! tiny this is. Okay. Yes, it is really, really small. But look at it. Guys, look at the inside. Does this not look so cute? literally looks like Baja Blast, just frozen. And then I, I opened up the bag, and I was wondering, why did they not give a spoon? So I went, you had gotten us spoons. But then I realized that there's a little tiny spoon inside, Aww. which is appropriate because the container is so small. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of you sense. You can only take tiny bites, or it'll be gone in, in a moment. Well, we have our own spoons. That's right. And I'm going to use this one instead of the Taco Bell pre-made so one that they gave. So you can take a real bite, like a exactly. real man. A real man's bite. Smells exactly like Baja Blast. I'm, that is actually. I'm crazy. trying it. Gelato. I just cannot believe gelato. How much? By the way, uh, Michael the Sledgehammer says he wants us to save him some. That's not happening. I mean, he kind of paid for it in a way. When you think about it, not really. He didn't pay for it, but Radio U did. That might have to be happening. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. How does it taste exact? This is like. This is exactly like Mountain. It tastes just Baja like Blast. Baja Blast. Mm. Frozen. It's like if, it's really like, it's not quite the same consistency, but it's like if you got one of those, um, you know those little, the tubes that you freeze, the flavor ice, what do you mm-hmm. call those ice pops? Oh yeah. It tastes really like that. Popsicles. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like that. That's what it is. It's just a, a giant round popsicle. Yeah. That tastes exactly like a Baja Blast. Five out of five. Good job, Taco Bell. Well, this won't put me on the toilet. How much would you pay for this, though, if you actually were paying? Um, I would not pay more than two dollars. Because this was not more than two dollars. This is four dollars <laughs> for, for this little thimble of of gelato. No, that is that's insanity. Unacceptable. Insanity. Yeah. So maybe these will be around for a while because they won't mm. sell because nobody wants That's to That's terrible. <laughs> but mm. what's the difference between gelato and like ice cream? Hmm. I should probably look that up. Like what is the actual difference? All right, you keep filibustering there, while I Is there try no to... milk inside of here? Is that why? Well, maybe it's just because well, 
I mean, they're both frozen. Um, let's it has see. to be the absence of milk. Gelato has less milk fat and more milk, oh! milk than ice cream. Huh? It's often made without eggs. That's right. I didn't taste any eggs in this, so it makes I sense. I can't taste eggs and ice cream. <laughs> I, I didn't know they had eggs in them either. It, it also says gelato is churned more slowly than ice cream, which incorporates less air and results in a denser texture. Oh, it is definitely denser than ice cream. That is for sure. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. All I know is it's pretty good, but it's also pretty expensive and they don't give you much. Yeah. I take it back. A four out of five so, stars. Well, five out of five for taste and two out of five for everything else. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> good morning to Nikki. Hello, Nikki. Hello. Hello, Hudson. Nikki, I have some wild news to share with you to start your day. So early on in the morning, <laughs> uh, Nikki, have you ever, have you ever gone swimming with dolphins? Um, no, I wanted to at like SeaWorld, they have like the discovery cove. Um, but technically we've been in the ocean and mm, dolphins, dolphins are also are in the there, ocean. So it's not a stretch to say they were around somewhere. Technically <laughs> you are in the water with dolphins. I think that counts, yes, which means like I also have the been ones swimming where you ocean with dolphins. yeah we all have been the one where you could like hold on and they do the tricks around you i've not done that well i always uh have been concerned about doing that i don't know if it's a experience i ever want to have and especially not after i see this story where in japan in the oceans around japan they are concerned that a dolphin has been attacking uh people for the last like two years they say that uh there's been about 50 dolphin attacks in this area in Japan in the last two years. And, uh, so wait, some... dolphins attacking people yes. or like people attacking the dolphins in the water, the dolphins unprovoked attacking people as well as, um, many other animals that are in the water there as well, but not, uh, and they say dolphins are the only animals that do this, right. That attack for fun. They just kill things yeah. for no reason. Dolphins um, are not as nice as we always think they are. No. They have been known to just attack any other like manatees and other dolphins. So like humans are no different. They will attack you. Yeah. Uh, and so this, but the crazy thing is that there's been about 50 dolphin attacks in the last two years in this area. They, some are blaming it all on one individual dolphin. And they not only know which dolphin it is. For 50 years? No, for, for, <laughs> for 50 attacks in two years. Oh, 50 attacks. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're not only, not only are they blaming, pinning this all on one individual Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin. They're saying they know why this dolphin is doing it. They well, he's obviously angry. He's angry. And he's angry because he hasn't been able to find a female partner. And so he's getting frustrated. Oh. Don't oh, say, no. oh, this is not, no, it's wrong. Oh, yeah. It's bad behavior. If a well, human was doing this, to, if I was out there, if I get divorced, I know. <laughs> I, get divorced <laughs> I can't go attacking Listen. people because I'm upset. It doesn't work like that. I know, but like he can't do anything about it. There's no like dolphin dating app sometimes. Mm, yeah. What if the little area brought in more dolphins, like a bachelorette dolphin <laughs> yeah. bachelor sort of thing? And he was the guy I and the dolphins know. came in. I don't know if that's fair to the female somebody. dolphins to get to pin to pair them with a guy like this. That's true. I don't want someone with a bad reputation. That's He's right. a bad boy. <laughs> and then otherwise, if you if you don't tell them the reputation, then yeah. they're like feeling like the wolves pull over their eyes. Cause they're going to find out one day they're going to read the news eventually. So well, I don't... I'm surprised though. Cause I think in Japan, I know they, okay, let's say this nicely. <laughs> they do away with whales, you know? Okay. <laughs> so I, I thought they also did away with dolphins. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a big negative. So I'm surprised if they had a dolphin that was still causing issues, he's still around. I, that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> Whether they are known for doing such things or not, if it's one, if they know it's one dolphin, then why yeah. don't they just, I mean, take him out. He's got to go to at least put him in dolphin jail. I think that is taking out. Why? <laughs> I don't know where else, uh, you know, like he can't obviously go to like a, a dolphin facility with mm -hmm. other dolphins if he has problems. So I'm surprised Solitary that, confinement that he's just frustrated. It is. Yeah, I mean, like, he's just, 
everybody's trying to find somebody. Yeah. He just doesn't know what to do. Maybe he, you know what, what if we, what we tell a man, if he was doing this, you got to stop, you got to focus your energy on something else. You just, you can't take it out on other people because that's not going to get you anywhere. Well, I still think the uh, he's the bachelor. Is that would be was that the guy one or which is yeah, the guy? Yeah, the guy one? when like, it's the individual is is the bachelor. The man is the bachelor, and then when it's a woman, she's the bachelorette. So he's the next one. We've and done the golden a, bachelor. Now we do the dolphin yeah, bachelor. It's the the dolphin one, and you can have a whole show about it. And I'm sure actually he get more agitated, so it's probably better <laughs> we leave him alone. <laughs> I can't believe they're doing this. I actually, you know what? I can't believe it took this long. McDonald's is uh, going to be redesigning their McFlurry containers. The next time you get a McFlurry, it is going to look a little different. Not only have they gotten rid of the iconic yet confusing spoon they used to give out with the McFlurries, uh, they've replaced that with a different spoon. They also now are getting rid of the lid entirely. Um, And instead, it will be replaced with a cup that has flaps that kind of fold over. They say they're doing this for the environment because it'll be less waste, less plastic going out into whatever. I don't what you know what? Great. Great for them. I think this just makes sense because the lid prior was pointless. It wasn't even a lid. You know, it was wasteful. It was stupid. It was unnecessary and actually inconvenient because if you dropped your McFlurry upside down somehow before you ever got to taste it, it would still spill. That, therefore, that's not even a lid. I don't even know what that plastic ring was. What purpose did it serve? Because it wasn't keeping anything contained. Uh, it was just in the way. It just made it more difficult for me to stick my tongue inside the McFlurry container and lick out all of the Oreo goodness. Does nobody else eat McFlurries that way? Um, and, of course, this is all all mood anyways because the McFlurry machine is going to be broken when you go, right? Yeah, I said it. Looking forward to a big weekend in college football. You want to let me know which game you're looking forward to the most. I think for many, it's probably going to be the top 10 matchup. Texas visiting Michigan at the big house. That's a good one. I'm also interested. Boise State, Oregon. Oregon did not look good last weekend. Could Boise State pull off the upset? They got a Heisman contender, a running back, uh, Ashton, Ashton Gianti. Maybe uh, maybe Oregon on upset alert. And then, uh, uh, honestly, the game I'm looking forward to the most has no ranked teams in it, but it's uh, Colorado and Nebraska because it's just, it's the show. You got to see Coach Prime going up against Patrick Mahomes Jr. and Dylan Rayola for Nebraska. That's going to be a good game. The other thing that's interesting in college football this weekend is that, uh, let me check, we are, uh, yeah, one week into the season for everybody except for a few teams. And already... Coaches are being called upon to be fired, specifically Florida, where their fans have set up a GoFundMe to try to raise $26 million to fire their coach, Billy Napier, after they lost to Miami last week. Yes, they've played one game this year. They're already clamoring for Billy Napier to be run out of town. $26 million, by the way, that's his buyout, so they'd have to pay that back. And they're like, it's worth it. Worthy to get rid of Billy Napier. I'm such of two minds on this because he's only been there for two seasons so far. So it feels like it's kind of early to go ahead and get rid of him. But then again, this year, even if they beat expectations after losing to Miami, you're still talking about like a barely bowl eligible team probably is best case scenario because they have such a tough schedule. And like, if we're honest, if you, if you're paying attention to college football, can you imagine a scenario where Billy Napier all of a sudden makes Florida, you know, a, a team that's competing for the college football playoff. It's, it seems, it seems like a very distant idea that that's even possible. And that's the standard in Florida. So I understand why they want to get rid of them, but still it just feels so soon and so expensive. It is the Hudson show on radio. U eight, seven, seven, two radio. U. it is such a treat today to get the chance to talk with David from the band remedy drive. David, how are you doing today? Doing well. It's good to be. It's been too long since we've been on Radio U, so it's good to talk to you. This it's time. it's been a while, but a lot of exciting stuff going on with your new album that's out that we'll talk about here, and of course, uh, your organization Exodus Road. First of all, David, you're talking to us from sunny. Um, what? Where is it? Where it's all sunny and nice? Nash- like Nashville, Tennessee is my east facing window. Um, <laughs> it looks amazing. Drop the girls off at school. Yeah, uh-huh. thank you. <laughs> um. So, okay, so we've got, we've got the album we'll get to in a second. We'll talk about the Exodus Road, too. But, David, 
I know there's more to you than that. So tell me, what else have you had going on in your life that's not music and uh, your organization related? Um, I mean, the biggest thing is my kids and my wife. Uh, this last year has been amazing. It's my was my son's last year in the house and getting him off to college a couple weeks ago. Wow. Um, it's something else. It's not uh, for the faint of heart, you know, having, having so much wonderful and special time with the kid here and then kind of letting him go and, and hoping, uh, hoping that, you know, and trusting and believing that he's, he's going to go out and do great things. It's just this very difficult thing to put into words. So that's why I wrote a whole album about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, did you, did you guys do anything special? Like I know, at least for me and my family, when it was our graduating summer, we each yeah. like we got to uh, the high school senior got to pick all of the vacation stuff that we did pretty much. Did you any, oh, cool. anything special to commemorate the final the final year at home? The summer was not as uh, we we did a little bit of domestic travel, but what was cool is I invited Jack to a Germany tour we had. It was two weeks in Germany. He came for the back half of that. Flew by himself across the Atlantic, and I wow. met him in Hamburg, and that was pretty special. Getting getting to getting to spend a week with him in another culture. That is uh, that does sound amazing. I was I I think I yeah. saw some of the the pictures from your trip uh, up on Twitter, yeah. or Instagram, or whatever, and yeah, it looked like that looked like an amazing time. It was, and it, you go from having a real like rock star rock and roll concert to going and playing uh, in front of like. 50 people in a town of 600 in this small room uh, with a with the upright piano that I took all the stuff off so you could see the hammers and strings in there from it was a pre World War One piano. Oh my gosh! Um, and that sort of thing, man, it was special. Uh, just in the shadow of a mountain with a castle on it, playing an acoustic <laughs> concert, like it's awesome. It doesn't sound like it gets much better than that. What is, uh, I mean, you've, I'm assuming you've been overseas a couple of times now. What's the biggest going to Germany? What's like the biggest culture shock? Oh man, there's a politeness like Germany in particular is the politeness and a, a real humility, um, that I was, uh, really, that really connected with me, yes, especially there. Um, then an eagerness to, I think an eagerness to talk about uh, cultural issues and talk about historical issues, you know, you think you'd be walking on eggshells, but there's a real eagerness of, of people to, in Germany in particular, to, 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 to grapple with some of their particular history and right. compared to our history. Um, the food, uh, <laughs> like everybody says that the food's different. There's just stuff that is allowed in our food here, like red dyes and yellow dyes and different and it's just not the same over there. Like, like stuff, you just feel different after eating a lot over there. Like, oh, yeah. we eat, oh, they, they're, they're obsessive with breakfast. <laughs> like, it's so <laughs> fun when you go to Germany. If you ever like, eat, like it is a big thing. Even if it's just like, there is the, the three guys in the band and then two other guys on tour. And the, the concert promoter that put the tour together, he could lay out this big spread every morning um, with all sorts of cheeses, all sorts of granolas and yogurts and, um, breads and bagels. That was kind of a fun culture shock. Jeez, you are, I mean, I can't afford a trip to Germany right now, but you're really selling it for me. I, I'm going to have to start oh, saving. <laughs> Jack and I went all the way up the tower in Cologne. I mean, you had to walk spirals. And when we were almost to the top, all the phones in the building went off. And the, uh, and this is after getting frisked by security downstairs. And the whole city was like making an alarm sound. It was just like, Kind of how we test tornado sirens here, but everything was in German, so it couldn't tell if something something dangerous. Yeah, you didn't know right if it was just a test, just a or test or if it was real. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, David! So you've got all that going on. Let's actually talk about. You said you that the new album is about like letting your son, you know, go out into the world. Is, is that that what I'm getting here? Yeah, there's a lot of that that came into play on the album because I'm writing it right here where I'm sitting and recording it a year ago, starting to, uh, for the first time I took five consecutive months off touring so I could see all the kids varsity football games. Um, and that time period just started to prepare me for being able to let go, uh, of, of having them here. 
but also other, you know, like the song Scars is about my daughters and my son and just the, you know, parenting, parenting, if, if you do it right, you're going to get scars and you're going to, and you're going to love through all that heartache. I love that. Um, what do yeah. you, with that said, what do you hope then that people hearing the new music for the first time, what do you hope they take away from it? Um, my daughter, Ava, she's 16 now. She said something kind of interesting. She's like, dad, it's sad that you've, you know, when you started off, you only wrote like religious songs. And then you wrote three albums that were all about human trafficking. Like, it's nice that you can just write an album. that's just music. <laughs> <laughs> Which I does. Um, and so that even though I almost don't want to say this song was for Jack, because I want that song to be for anybody that, that ha is having that emotional thing of letting someone go or moving to another chapter of their life. Um, and the same with Scars to prove it. Like there's so many different ways to, um, that I hope that people will take away hope and even to be seen or, or like for me, great art helps me just have this peace and this, um, it, and, and it opens up a lot of, of, of um, empty spaces uh, and, and, I just hope that it does what a, what a good song is supposed to do and just makes helps somebody get through their drive, get through their day. Of course. Um, it's a really hopeful, positive album. Yes, I, uh, I love that. We've been playing Steady a lot here on Radio U, and I get that from that one for uh, sure. Nice. Um, you mentioned, too, that you wrote several albums about human trafficking. You, many people probably don't know that uh, you have an organization you're involved with called Exodus Road that does a ton. Yeah. And we're talking, I mean, I know they we're talking like actual boots on the ground, real work to help people with human trafficking, but fill people in how, uh, what does Exodus Road do and how can they also uh, support it themselves? So you guys um, played our song Commodity in 2014. And that was the song we wrote before I ended up merging the band with a counter human trafficking organization called the Exodus Road. Um, and so we've tried to raise funds and awareness for the work. And the work is this, we spy on criminal networks around the world that are selling teenagers and children and sometimes families into slavery. And sometimes it's uh, labor trafficking, but most of what we're focusing on is sex trafficking, the kind of trafficking that happens in a red light district or hotels. And I have teams around the world with the Exodus Road that devote their time, devote their lives to spying on these criminal networks, to gather the kind of intelligence that we need so that we can partner with authorities to make raids against these establishments that have so far, these raids have so far resulted in um, the arrest of over 1300 human traffickers and in the freedom that we've got to contribute to of uh, 2,600 survivors of sex trafficking. Wow. Which that's, it's just been this thing that's just, we. I, I can't believe that our stories uh, merged this way and then our path of the Exodus Road and, and Remedy Drive um, aligned. It just all happened. And Radio U has been a big part of that for us and helping us spread the word because the way our goal is that ordinary people, and it's happening all around that, like we were just played in Columbus um, to uh, at a, a little house party of people that help fund the record. And uh, this family sends a lot of uh, funds towards the Exodus Road that, and those funds go towards um, uh, commissioning somebody to sit down in a dark place and get the kind of evidence they need to to really have convincing a uh, convincing story that's going to convict traffickers and keep that trafficker from hurting somebody else. So I, I'm really grateful that you guys have been part of it over the years. Yeah, no, we're it's something we're happy to be a part of, and it's amazing work that you're doing. And you think like. It's one of those old cliches of you can make a difference in just one life. It's worth it. But you've changed so many, saved so many lives uh, by what the Exodus Road is doing. So we appreciate it. And uh, it, it is it is really amazing. You're a <laughs> it feels like you're a real life superhero, like the closest thing we're going to get. <laughs> well, and that's that's the that's one of the things that I I've tried to put into a lot of lyric is that, man, I'm just a kid from Nebraska. I wrote some songs and then I got to join these teams and learn how to use the technology and learn how to spy on criminal networks. Um, but that's the thing. It's not, it's just, this is just a bunch of brave human beings that I get to partner with. Um, and I can't show you their faces. I can't tell you their names, but I get to sing songs about them that I think that their work 
and our combined work is going to echo throughout all eternity. The work of ordinary human beings that have decided um, that they can only do a little bit. So if it's heroic, it's only heroic in the way that a kid brought his lunch to Jesus Christ and said, hey, can you use my lunch? And the creator of everything lifts it up, blesses it, and you see that be multiplied. And that's what I've got to witness firsthand. Absolutely. Um, so, okay. Um, I guess people may want to know how can they support, what can they, how, where can they get involved with the Exodus road to help out? At remedy drive, our band name, dot com slash action. Um, there's a link. If you wanted to commission an investigator to go on your behalf, um, that you can join this group of hundreds of remedy drive fans and some radio, you listeners, I'm sure already, um, contributing and but then there's other ways on that link remedydrive.com slash action of ways uh that people have taken it in their own hands like a woman that ran a 5k in stiletto high heels <laughs> and she raises awareness isn't that crazy yeah uh her feet were bleeding she was carried across the finish line but she oh my God. All, she raised all this awareness and all these funds um and then a, recently up a little bit to the east of you uh near in massachusetts a girl um She's 16 when I met her at a festival a couple of years ago, and she's already put in over a thousand hours and raised thousands of dollars with public speaking engagements. One, you know, won a medal from the Girl Scouts, their gold tier medal for volunteer and activism. That is, uh, that is impressive. It's, it's actually, it's, I, I can't say it enough. It's amazing what you do. Um, so people should definitely check out the Exodus road, do what you can to get involved. It's something that anybody, it is a way where any individual can actually really make a difference. Um, and yeah. of course, check out the new album from Eddie drive Two scars to prove it. We've been loving it here at radio. U. David, it's been so good talking to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, for all that you do. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for playing our songs. Get your popcorn ready. It's our weekend tradition on the Hudson show. We call it the weekend watch list, letting you know, What's new that you could be watching in theaters and at home this weekend? Honestly, my possibly my favorite part of the show here on the Hudson Show every week. Let's start with the elephant in the room. The We'll spend the lion's share of our time on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, now in theaters. The sequel that follows three generations of the Deeds family as they return to their home in Winter River after an unexpected family tragedy. Still haunted by Beetlejuice, Lydia's life soon gets turned upside down and her rebellious teenage daughter discovers a mysterious portal to the afterlife. When someone says Beetlejuice's name three times, the mischievous demon gleefully returns to unleash his very own brand of mayhem. This does have a 76% from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes. It's actually certified fresh. 87% score from the audience. However, Tasha Robinson of Polygon says it's another tick mark on the seemingly endless list of 2020s franchise installments that serve as a belated victory lap for past comic triumphs while blunting what was unique about those triumphs. But on its own, it isn't much of a movie. I only just recently, for the first time in full, uh, watched the first Beetlejuice I liked it okay. It is a shocking movie to me that people have loved so much after all these years that they're like, let's bring it back. Although I do like Michael Keaton. Not sure I'm going to, well, no, I'm not going to go see this in theaters this weekend. But let me know if you do. Let me know what you think. I'll watch it eventually. Um, This is interesting, though. Now streaming this weekend on Netflix, Rebel Ridge, directed by the director of Green Room. I know a lot of people like that. Rebel Ridge, a former Marine, confronts corruption in a small town when local law enforcement unjustly seizes the bag of cash he needs to post his cousin's bail. It's got a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Randy Myers of San Jose Mercury News says, it's not only smart and thrilling, but shot, written, and directed well. And the acting is terrific, particularly uh, Aaron Pierre, who's the star who injects a steely intensity when it's needed. People love it. The critics, anyways, love and Rebel Ridge. If you see that this weekend on Netflix, let me know at 877-2-RADIO-U. Some other options for you. Oscar winning The Boy and the Heron, a new Studio Gili film. Is that how you say it? I never know how to say it. That's on Max now. Um, also, a couple mini series. Fight Night Million Dollar Heist is on Peacock. And The Perfect Couple with Nicole Kidman is on Netflix. Let me know 
what you watched this weekend at 877-2 Radio U if you see anything good. That's your weekend watch list here on the Hudson Show. We'll see you at the movies. I'm so proud of myself for discovering this hack yesterday. And I don't know if a lot of other people know this and I'm the one that's just way behind. But uh, I went out to a baseball game last night. And I said, like, it was a group. There was five of us. I said, you know what we should do? Typically, what we would do is five across, right? You go seat one, two, three, four, five. I said, no, let's do it this way. Let's get two seats in row E and three seats in row F. So we're sitting in a, in a square kind of formation instead of sitting in one long line. It worked much better. If you want to actually be able to talk with everybody you're going to an event with and there's more than three people attending, you got to do the stack. You take two rows and get two or three seats in each row instead of just going, uh, what do they call You know, like you're going five, six, seven across. So you don't do that because person in seat one is not going to be able to talk to person in seat five. You're not going to be able to have a group conversation. I Yet again, I don't know if this is maybe something other people have discovered long ago and only I am now just finally figuring it out, but it felt like a real cheat code to actually be able to talk to everybody last night. We are doing love them or leave them where we have a guy simply put, he's got a gal he's been going out with for a little while. And now multiple times she's canceled on him uh, shortly before they were supposed to meet up for a date because uh, in both cases, her mom has invited her to do something else. And she's chosen that over him. What should he do? He's feeling hurt. 8772 Radio U. We did hear from David, who simply says, break up with her. We also heard from Jackson, who went into a little more detail, saying uh, two last-minute cancellations is not cool. Maybe she's just not into you as you want, and you're right to be questioning, questioning things. Better to end it before you invest more. Emma also got in at 8772 Radio U saying, I think you have a point. Canceling last minute is frustrating, especially more than once in the short period of time. If she really likes you, she'd make you a priority. Maybe it's worth bringing up to her in a calm way before you make any big decisions. 8772 Radio U, the consensus definitely seems to be that she's not making you a priority and therefore probably isn't worth you making her a priority. I think there's a couple things to take into account. You might need to be honest with yourself, not just about your feelings because they're important, but also think about this in this relationship, right? Are you thinking, well, if I, uh, if I end things like I'm going to bounce right back and you know, I've got another possibility. I, I feel pretty confident. Or are you like, well, I haven't been on a lot of dates in a while. Um, Because really, I mean, the answer should be the same either way. But the more that you're feeling like, well, I haven't been on a date in a while and this is the only girl is going to cloud your judgment more. And so I think you just need to take that into account. But if that's your situation, maybe saying, you know what? I am a priority. My feelings do matter. And I don't need to let her push me around and cancel on me just because she's the only gal that's gone out with me for a while. Maybe that'll give you taking a step in this direction this time may actually help you moving forward as well. Build a little confidence that'll help you going forward. It, it may not be worth just, you know, you don't need to cancel on her the next time you guys have something planned, but maybe it is worth a conversation before you go full into, uh, and she's canceling because of her family. Sometimes that can be important. So, but I, I lean towards, yeah, she's not making you a priority. A breakup, is, the, the needle is moving in the breakup direction. Thanks for listening to The Hudson Show. Please don't forget to rate and review the podcast.